There are some things we can control and some things we can't. What we control includes our opinions, our pursuits, our desires and our dislikes. Basically, our own actions. On the flip side, our bodies, possessions, reputation and authority are not under our control. They're influenced by outside forces. What we do control can be free and unimpeded, while what we don't is often weak, limited and owned by others. If you think you control what you actually don't, you'll find yourself frustrated, upset and blaming everyone from your neighbours to the gods. But if you focus only on what truly is yours and see the rest for what it is, outside your control, you won't be pushed around or forced into anything. You won't blame others, feel compelled to act against your will or suffer harm. So, aim high, but don't get sidetracked by lesser goals. You might need to let go of some ambitions or put others on hold. If you chase both the high aims and material gains like power and wealth, you might end up missing out on both. But if you focus on true freedom and happiness, which come from focusing on what you can control, you'll find peace. When you face challenges, tell yourself, this is just an illusion, not really what it seems. Check it against what you know. Does it involve something within your control? If not, remind yourself it doesn't really affect you. Remember, chasing what you want usually leads to getting it, while avoiding what you dislike prevents unpleasantness. But if you miss what you desire, you'll feel let down. And if you encounter what you want to avoid, you'll be miserable. So limit your dislikes to things that mess with your ability to do what you can control. And for now, cut out wanting things out of your control entirely. If you do want something you can control and is worth wanting, remember you don't have it yet. Approach your actions, those to pursue or avoid, carefully and calmly. As for the things you enjoy or love, whether it's a ceramic cup or a person, always remind yourself of their true nature. If your favourite cup breaks, remember it was just one of many cups. If you express affection towards your child or spouse, remember you're just loving a human who, like all things, is mortal. This way, you won't be thrown off when faced with loss. Whenever you're about to do something, Take a moment to consider what the experience typically entails. Say you're headed to the bathhouse. You should expect that some people might splash water, others might shove, some may shout insults, and a few might even try to steal. Preparing yourself for these possibilities, you can enter the situation thinking, I'm going to bathe, but more importantly, I'm going to maintain a mindset that's in harmony with my nature. This approach isn't just for bathing, but for any activity. That way, if something does go wrong, you won't just react to the disruption, but remember your higher goal of keeping a calm mind, no matter what. It's not external events that upset us, but our thoughts about these events. Take death, for example. It's not inherently scary. Just think about how Socrates faced it. It's our belief that death is frightening that scares us. So when something gets in your way or you're upset, don't blame others or the situation. Blame your own mindset. A novice might blame others for his troubles, someone just learning might blame himself, but a truly wise person blames neither others nor himself. Don't brag about things that aren't really your achievements. If a horse could talk and said, I am handsome, that would make sense. But if you say, I have a handsome horse, remember, you're just boasting about something that's the horse's quality, not yours. What truly belongs to you is how you react to things. So. When you respond well to life's events, maintaining your integrity, then you have a real reason to feel proud because that virtue is truly yours. Imagine you're on a ship that's stopped at a port. You go ashore to fetch some water, and while you're there, you might have some fun picking up shells or grabbing an onion. But always keep one ear open for the captain's call to return. When he calls, drop everything and go back to the ship immediately, or else you might be dragged back and tied up like cargo. Life's the same way. You might have ties like a spouse or child, which are wonderful, but when duty calls, the captain in this metaphor, you have to be ready to leave everything behind promptly. And if you're older, it's wise to stay close to the ship. That is, always be ready to meet your obligations without delay, because you may not always have the luxury of time to respond. Don't insist that life unfolds according to your desires. Instead, hope that things turn out the way they do, and you'll navigate life much more smoothly. Illness may affect your body, but it doesn't have to impact your choices, that's up to you. A limp may slow your stride, but not your ability to choose your response. Remember this whenever challenges arise, these are obstacles to something specific, not to you personally. 
When something unexpected happens, think about what skills you can use to handle it. If you're attracted to someone, use your self-control. If you're in pain, summon your courage. If someone insults you, respond with patience. By doing this regularly, you won't be swept away by your initial reactions to circumstances. Never say you've lost something. Instead, think of it as returned. If your child or spouse passes away, see it as them being returned to the universe. If someone steals from you, consider that too as something returned. It doesn't really matter who takes these things back. While you have them, take care of them, but don't consider them as purely yours, much like how you would treat a hotel room. If you're serious about self-improvement, steer clear of excuses like losing income from neglecting business or having a disobedient servant if you don't reprimand them. It's better to live with less and maintain your peace than to have plenty and live with stress. Start with the small annoyances, spilled oil or stolen wine. See these as the cost of maintaining calm. Nothing comes for free. If your servant doesn't respond to your call or doesn't do what you ask, remember it's not crucial enough to upset you. If you want to get better, be okay with others seeing you as naive or uninformed about external matters. Don't try to be seen as knowledgeable or important. Doubt yourself instead. Balancing attention to your inner state while trying to gain external goods is tricky. Focusing on your inner peace means sometimes ignoring the latter. Hoping your family and friends will live forever is foolish because it's hoping to control the uncontrollable. Expecting your servant to be perfect is equally naive. You're expecting them to be something they're not. But managing your own desires is within your reach. So focus on that, what you control. Remember, real freedom comes from not depending on others for your happiness or peace. Otherwise, you're just living in servitude. Think of life like being a guest at a dinner party. When a dish comes around, take what you need with moderation. If it passes you by, don't try to stop it. If it hasn't come yet, don't strain towards it, but wait patiently. Apply this mindset to everything, your family, career, wealth, and you'll live in harmony, worthy of dining with the gods. And if you can go further, declining what's handed to you, you won't just dine with the gods, but also share in their rule. This is how figures like Diogenes and Heraclitus earned their divine status. When you see someone devastated by grief, maybe they've lost a son or are suffering through personal or business setbacks, understand it's not the situation itself causing the anguish, but the person's perception of it. Offer comfort, but don't wallow with them or get dragged down by their despair. Imagine yourself as an actor in a play and the script is written by someone else. Your job isn't to pick your role, but to play it convincingly, whether you're cast as a beggar, a businessman, or a governor. When you hear a raven caw and think it's a bad omen, remind yourself that no superstition can dictate your fate. Tell yourself that it's not an omen for you personally, but perhaps for something trivial, like your possessions or social standing. Remember, any sign can be lucky if you decide to see the opportunity in whatever comes next. You can be unbeatable, but only if you engage in battles you can control. When you see someone achieving high status or receiving praise, don't rush to envy them or declare them fortunate. If true happiness comes from things within our control, then what they have doesn't define their happiness or yours. Don't aspire to be someone with high rank or status. Aim to be free, which means valuing what's in your control and disregarding what isn't. Keep in mind, that it's not insults or physical attacks that harm us, but our reaction to them. If someone tries to provoke you, recognize that it's your interpretation that makes you feel provoked. Take a moment before reacting. With a little pause, you can keep your cool. Always be mindful of life's fragility. Keep the realities of death and exile close at heart. By doing this, you'll eliminate petty fears and avoid desperately clinging to the things of this world. If you're serious about embracing philosophy, brace yourself for some ridicule. People might mock you saying, look who's turned philosopher all of a sudden, and comment on your changed demeanor. Just keep your cool and stay committed to your path. If you stick to your guns, those same people who laughed might end up respecting you. But if you let them sway you, you'll end up feeling twice as embarrassed. If you catch yourself trying to impress others or seeking their approval, you're off track. Focus on being true to your philosophical principles wanting others to see you as a philosopher? Start by seeing yourself as one. That should be enough. Don't stress about fears like living in obscurity or feeling insignificant. If being dishonored is truly bad, 
No one can impose that on you without your consent. It's not your job to chase after power or party invites. And worrying about not being somebody is pointless. Focus on excelling in areas under your control, like maintaining your integrity. Concerned about not helping your friends with money or influence? Remember, these aren't things you control or owe anyone. Instead, strive to be a person of honour. That's more valuable than any material aid you could offer. And if your country seems to lack your help, think again. Not everyone can provide material things, but contributing your virtues is a significant help in itself. In terms of your role in society, take up any position as long as it doesn't compromise your character. When someone else gets a perk or privilege, whether it's a better seat at a dinner, a compliment, or an exclusive invite, don't get upset. If it's genuinely good, be happy for them. If it's not, why bother wanting it? Remember, you can't expect to receive the same favours without doing what others do, like flattery or constant attendance. It's like buying lettuce. If you're not willing to pay the price, don't expect to enjoy the goods. So if you skip out on praising someone or attending their events, you're not missing out. You're just choosing not to engage in exchanges you don't value. And that's a reward in itself, staying true to your principles. When something minor happens, like your neighbour's kid breaking a cup, you're quick to say, these things happen. Remember to react the same way if it's your cup that breaks. And this doesn't just apply to small stuff. If someone else's wife or child dies, you might think, that's life. But if it's your loved one, suddenly it's a tragedy. Try to keep the same perspective you have when it happens to others. Just as a target isn't set up to be missed, evil isn't an inherent part of the world's design. Imagine how mad you'd be if someone would try to hurt your physical body, so why allow others to mess with your mind? Protect your thoughts as closely as you'd protect your own body. Whenever you're about to dive into something, think it through. What comes before, what comes after. Say you want to win at the Olympics. Sounds great, but remember there's a lot of prep involved. You've got to stick to a strict diet, train relentlessly regardless of the weather, give up treats and face the risk of getting hurt, maybe even losing despite all your efforts. If you're still keen after considering all that, go for it. Otherwise, you'll just be like kids who switch from one game to another, never really committing to anything. You can't flip from one interest to another and expect to excel. It's the same with wanting to be a philosopher after hearing someone impressive like Euphrates speak. Think it through. Do you really have what it takes? Being a philosopher isn't just about thinking deep thoughts. It's a lifestyle. It means giving up some comforts, facing ridicule, and possibly coming up short in public roles or debates. Decide if you're really up for this. If you're not willing to give up your current comforts and lifestyle for the sake of inner peace and clarity, then maybe this path isn't for you. Don't jump from role to role. Philosopher one minute, government official the next. You have to choose who you want to be. Either focus on developing your inner self, which involves a lot of personal sacrifice, or chase external success, which is a whole different game. When it comes to what we owe each other, everything boils down to our roles and relationships. If someone's a father, the expectation is that you respect and care for him, even if he's tough on you, or not the ideal dad. The key here isn't whether he's a good father, but that he's your father. Similarly, if your brother treats you badly, focus not on resenting his actions, but on maintaining your role as a good sibling by doing what's right, according to your own principles. When you're wronged, remember, you're only really hurt when you believe you're hurt. It's your reaction to the situation, not the situation itself, that causes pain. This mindset helps you figure out your duties, whether you're dealing with neighbours, fellow citizens, or any position of authority like a general. The real challenge is always about sticking to your principles. As for being respectful to the gods, it starts with believing they exist and that they run the universe justly and wisely. The most important thing is to trust their judgment, accepting whatever happens as part of a grand, intelligent plan. If you live by this belief, you won't find yourself blaming or feeling abandoned by the gods. You'll avoid a lot of emotional turmoil if you distinguish between what's in your control and what isn't. If you label something outside your control as good or bad, you'll inevitably feel let down or annoyed when things don't go your way, leading you to blame others, which is a natural response when we think something harmful has happened because of them. For example, if a son feels slighted by his father, not sharing what he sees as good things, he might resent his father. Historical figures like Polynices and Eteocles turned against each other over the belief that royal power was inherently good. Similarly, farmers, sailors, 
merchants, or anyone who suffers a personal loss might blame the gods because they equate their immediate benefit with what is good. True respect for the gods, or piety, aligns with pursuing what truly benefits us and avoiding what harms us, based on a correct understanding of what's really good or bad. Expressing this through traditional acts like making offerings or sacrifices should be done genuinely and generously, not stingily or beyond our means, as a way of honouring the traditions passed down from our ancestors. When you go for a reading or divination, keep in mind that you're there because you don't know the outcome yet. As a philosopher or someone trying to think deeply about life, you should remember that if something is out of your control, it's neither good nor bad in itself. So don't go to a diviner full of hope or fear about what you might hear, that'll just stress you out. Instead, remind yourself that whatever comes out of this consultation doesn't really affect your core being. It's up to you to use whatever information you get in a constructive way. No one can stop you from that. Approach the gods as if they're your advisors, offering guidance, not commands. And if you get advice, respect it as you would from any advisor you trust, or you'll basically be ignoring the wisdom you sought out in the first place. When it comes to divination, follow Socrates' approach. Use it for things where the outcome isn't clear and reason doesn't provide an answer. But don't rely on divination for decisions about standing by your friends or your country in tough times, even if the omens seem bad. Logic dictates that loyalty sometimes means taking risks. Remember the story of the man chastised by the oracle at Delphi for not helping his friend in danger. That's the level of commitment to higher principles expected of you. Make it a habit to define who you are, both alone and around others. Stick to a persona that you're proud of, maintaining your integrity at all times. When it comes to talking, less is usually more. Avoid idle chatter about trivial things like sports, food or gossip about others. If possible, steer conversations toward meaningful topics. If you find yourself among strangers, it's often better to keep quiet. Keep your laughter moderate and infrequent. It's fine to enjoy a moment, but excessive laughter can undermine the seriousness with which you approach life. As for making promises or swearing oaths, avoid it whenever possible. If you must, be cautious about committing only to what you can genuinely uphold. Be wary of attending parties thrown by strangers or people who don't share your values. If you do find yourself at such events, be extra careful not to fall into bad habits just because everyone else is. It's like the old saying, if you hang out with someone messy, you might end up with some stains, even if you started out clean. When it comes to physical needs, food, drink, clothes, housing, stick to the basics. Avoid luxury and excess, especially stuff that's just for show. Regarding relationships, try to hold off on intimacy until marriage if you can. But if you do engage in it, follow the social norms. Don't judge others who go about it differently and don't brag about your own restraint. If someone tells you that a person has been talking behind your back, don't rush to defend yourself. Instead, respond with something like, well, if he knew all my faults, he would have mentioned more than just those. You don't need to frequent the theater, but if you do go, don't get too caught up supporting one side or the other. Just hope for a good show and that the best performer wins. Avoid getting overly emotional. No excessive cheering, laughing or jeering. And afterwards, don't spend too much time talking about what happened unless you're discussing how it might help you grow. Talking a lot about it usually means you were more into the entertainment than taking something meaningful away from it. Be selective about whose performances or talks you attend. If you go, keep a serious demeanor and don't be a nuisance. Whenever you're meeting someone important, think about how wise folks like Socrates or Zeno would act. This will help you handle the situation appropriately and leave a good impression. When you're heading to meet someone powerful, brace yourself for the possibility of not being seen. You might get there and find out he's not available, or you might even be turned away at the door. Prepare for the idea that he might not have time for you. If it's still important to go, then go and handle whatever comes without complaining. Thinking it's a waste of time only shows you're getting hung up on things that really shouldn't bother you. When you're in social settings, try not to dominate the conversation with stories about your own risks or achievements. You might find your adventures exciting, but it's probably not as interesting for others to hear about. Also, steer clear of making jokes that could lead to laughs at the expense of others. It's a quick slide into less dignified behavior and could lessen people's respect for you. Definitely avoid getting into any crude or inappropriate talk. If someone else goes there and you can, call them out on it. If not, at least show with your silence and your expressions that you're not on board with that kind of talk. 
If you find yourself tempted by a pleasure, don't jump right in. Give it some time, think about the enjoyment, but also consider the regret that might follow. Weigh how good you'll feel if you skip it and how you'll be proud of yourself for resisting. If you decide it's the right time to indulge, make sure the pleasure doesn't just sweep you away. Keep in mind the satisfaction of overcoming temptations and holding on to your self-control. When you're doing something you believe is right, don't worry about being seen, even if some people might disapprove. If it's not the right thing to do, then stop. But if it is right, don't let the fear of criticism deter you. Stand by your actions, especially when you know they're justified. Just like in logic, where certain arguments hold weight only in specific contexts, at a social gathering, grabbing the biggest portion might seem good for your stomach, but does nothing for fostering goodwill. So when you're eating with others, remember it's not just about filling your belly. Pay attention to how you interact with your host and those around you. It's about manners and maintaining relationships. If you've taken on a role that's too tough for you, you're not just failing to meet those high standards, you're also neglecting what you could have successfully achieved within your limits. Just like you watch your step to avoid a nail or twisting your ankle, be just as cautious not to mess up your judgment. If we're mindful like this in all we do, we're less likely to make mistakes. When it comes to what you own, think of it as no more than what you need, just like a shoe should fit the foot. If you start demanding more than what's necessary, you're on a slippery slope, like a shoe that moves from being functional to overly fancy. There's no end to the extras you might think you need once you go beyond the basics. From a young age, women are often seen in terms of their relationships with men, and society pressures them to focus solely on their appearance and attracting men. We should encourage an environment where women are appreciated more for their integrity and character than just their looks. Spending too much time on bodily needs like excessive workouts, eating, drinking and other physical indulgences is a sign of limited understanding. These activities should be secondary. Your main focus should be on developing your intellect and character. When someone mistreats you or talks badly about you, remember they're acting from their own perspective, believing it's the right thing to do. They're not out to follow what you think is right, but what they believe is right. If their perspective is off, they're the ones who suffer because they're living with a misconception. So, if you start from this understanding, you can stay calm and forgiving, reminding yourself that's just how it seemed to him. Everything has two ways of being handled. If your brother does something wrong, you can choose to focus on the wrongdoing, which is hard to handle. Or you can remember he's your brother, he grew up with you, and hold on to that bond, which is much easier to handle. Arguments like, I'm richer, so I'm better, or I'm more eloquent, so I'm better, don't hold up. The correct perspective is I'm richer so I have more wealth or I'm more eloquent so my speech is better. You are not your wealth or your words. If someone bathes quickly, don't criticize them for bathing poorly, just note that they bathe quickly. If someone drinks a lot, don't jump to say it's bad, just acknowledge that they drink a lot. Until you understand their reasoning, you can't judge their actions correctly. This prevents you from jumping to conclusions about things that are more nuanced than they appear. Never flaunt the title of philosopher especially around people who aren't familiar with philosophical concepts. Instead of talking about how one should eat at a dinner, just eat properly according to your principles. Remember how Socrates did it. He never showed off. When people asked him for philosophical recommendations, he'd simply connect them with other philosophers. He was so humble that he was often overlooked. Similarly, if you're among people discussing philosophy and they don't really get it, it's better to stay quiet because you might end up spouting concepts you don't fully understand yet. And when someone tells you that you know nothing and it doesn't bother you, that's a sign you're truly embracing philosophy. Just like sheep don't show off how much grass they've eaten, but rather digest it to produce wool and milk, you should focus on internalizing what you learn and let your actions, not just your words, demonstrate your understanding. When you manage to live simply and cheaply, taking care of all your needs without much expense, don't boast about it. For instance, if you end up drinking water because it's economical, there's no need to announce it every time you do. Instead, think about how much more some people manage to stretch even less and endure more. If you want to test your endurance, do it for your own growth, not for show. Don't make a big deal out of it to others. A typical untrained person always expects good or bad outcomes to come from external sources, not from within. In contrast, a true philosopher expects all benefits or setbacks to arise from their own actions. 
Signs of someone truly progressing in philosophy include not criticizing or overly praising others, not bragging or defending themselves, and not blaming others for their own obstacles. They quietly work on themselves, focusing on removing desires for external things and avoiding actions that go against their nature. They remain indifferent to being seen as silly or ignorant. They're more concerned with self-scrutiny and vigilance as if guarding against an inner enemy. When someone flaunts their ability to understand complex texts like those of Chrysippus, remember that if Chrysippus hadn't written in such a challenging style, they'd have nothing to brag about. What's truly important isn't just understanding such texts, but applying their teachings to your life. It's not about being able to explain or admire the complexity of philosophy, it's about living it. So if someone asks me to read Chrysippus, I'd be embarrassed if I couldn't demonstrate that I live by what he teaches, not just that I can interpret his words. Stick to the principles laid out for you as if they were strict laws, almost as if breaking them would be a sin. And if people talk about you, whether good or bad, don't get caught up in it, it's not your concern. Focus on living by those principles, not on what others say. How much longer are you going to wait before you start considering yourself worthy of the highest ideals and stop ignoring your own reason? You've learned the rules you're supposed to follow, so what are you waiting for? Why keep looking for another teacher to put off making changes? You're not a kid anymore, you're fully grown. If you keep putting things off, saying you'll start taking care of your personal growth tomorrow or next week, you'll end up never improving. You'll stay uninformed your whole life, right until the end. It's time to act like the grown-up you are and treat everything that seems right and good as an absolute must-do. When you face challenges, whether they're tough, fun, something to be proud of or not, remember, this is your moment, like being in the Olympics. You can't just put it off. A single slip can set you back, but staying strong can push you forward. Socrates got to where he was by relentlessly bettering himself, focused only on reason. Even if you're not Socrates yet, you should live like someone aspiring to be. In philosophy, the most crucial part is the practical application of concepts, like the rule against lying. The next part is understanding why these rules exist, like why we shouldn't lie. The third part is about the underlying principles of these rules, such as what constitutes proof or truth. The third part is important for understanding the second, and the second is crucial because of the first. However, most of us spend all our time on the complex theories and completely neglect the basic, practical rules, so we end up knowing all the arguments for why we shouldn't lie, yet we lie anyway. In life, always keep these following thoughts at the ready. Lead me, O Zeus and destiny, to wherever you command. I'll follow willingly, and if I resist, I'll follow anyway. Another good one is this. Those who gracefully accept what must be are wise and understand divine matters. Finally, remember what Socrates said when faced with his own mortality. O Crito, if this is what the gods want, let it be. Enitus and Melitus can kill me, but they can't truly harm me. These thoughts can guide you in accepting and navigating the inevitable with dignity and wisdom.